It's been a little over two months since the 2020 MacBook Air was released, and since then, we actually got the new 13-inch MacBook Pros as well. And we finally just finished doing a ton of testing and comparison videos between these laptops, and we now know exactly who should be buying the MacBook Air instead of paying the extra cash for the Pro. Two months ago, there was a ton of hype over the MacBook Air for a couple of different reasons the new Magic Keyboard, the 10th gen chip, and the lower $999 price tag. But other than that, there really weren't any other changes this year. So let's dig a little deeper into the Magic Keyboard. We've been testing this keyboard out for a while, ever since the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and our final conclusion is that it's so good that we don't want Apple to change it. Just like the MacBook Air's incredible Force Touch trackpad, which is pure perfection and we wouldn't want Apple to change this basically ever, we also don't want Apple to change the Magic Keyboard. It's literally that good. You get the perfect balance of both key travel and feedback so it makes for really accurate and comfortable typing for long sessions. And since it now feels more like a traditional laptop keyboard, it's easier for Windows users to switch over, but I'd say that this new Magic Keyboard feels better than a lot of Windows laptops, which was never the case before. So great job, Apple. But the most important thing is Apple finally scrapping the previous keyboard's butterfly name, which temporarily destroyed the reputation of Apple's MacBook lineup. And for the past six months, since the release of this new keyboard on the 16-inch Pro, we haven't experienced any reliability issues at all, nor have we heard of any online, so this is great news for consumers. Now the bad news for the case of the MacBook Air is that this new keyboard is also available on the new 13-inch MacBook Pro as well, and that MacBook also finally gets a physical escape key, which was probably the number one thing that people hated about the touch bar on the Pro. Now before I get into our thoughts on the new 10th gen chip, I want to talk about the new price point. What really surprises this year is that Apple not only dropped the price by $100, but they also gave it double the storage as well. And that 256 gig storage upgrade used to cost $200. So essentially, this year's MacBook Air is $300 cheaper than the 2019 model in terms of value, and you're getting the new Magic Keyboard and the 1010 chip on top of that. But perhaps the craziest thing of all is that after only two months, you can now get this MacBook Air on Amazon for only $950 brand new, which is honestly a steal of a deal compared to last year. So if you guys are interested, we'll drop a link down to that sale in the description below. So that brings us to the most important and controversial feature surrounding this MacBook Air, and that's the new 10th gen chip. When you look at the spec sheet and compare it to the specs of the base 13-inch MacBook Pro, the Air honestly looks better. After all, this is a 10th gen chip, so it's gotta perform better than the old 8th gen chip in the Pro, right? And the RAM in this MacBook Air is rated at 3733 megahertz compared to only only 2,133 on the Pro, and you can even pay just $100 more and get a quad-core chip in the air that should easily wipe the floor with the Pro, right? Well, what we found was the complete opposite. Every single aspect of performance was worse on the Air, and the reason for that is a little flaw in the MacBook Air's design, but that little flaw was actually fatal. The MacBook Air has both a fan and a heatsink covering the processor, but unfortunately, the two aren't physically connected using a heat pipe, so the cooling system is absolutely atrocious. Now before I get into the horrible cooling, I want to just give you guys a general idea of the raw performance differences between the two. Surprisingly, in Geekbench 5 CPU test, even the i7 10th gen chip in the Air was weaker than the base i5 chip in the Pro, and that's raw performance without accounting for cooling. Now the bonus for the Air is that both of the quad-core chips feature Intel's new G7 graphics, so they actually have much more raw graphics performance compared to the base MacBook Pro. So we then tested Unigen's Heaven Gaming benchmark, which mostly uses graphics power, so it would make sense for the Air to perform better. However, right after we started the test, the MacBook Air shot up to 100 degrees Celsius. Yes, that's Celsius, 
not Fahrenheit, for those people who commented thinking that we made a mistake. In contrast, the pro was at 91 degrees Celsius at that part of the test. And then a couple minutes into the test, both laptops were basically maxing out their fans, but the difference was that the Pro cooled down to 83 degrees from 91, while the Air was still stuck at 100 degrees. And because of that, the MacBook Air ended up scoring lower, even though the graphics power is much higher, the complete opposite of what the spec sheet would make you believe. In a different test, I connected our eGPU setup and tried to play some games in Windows 10, but it didn't work out well at all. The gameplay was choppy, and the frame rates were pretty bad compared to the MacBook Pro with the same eGPU. I discovered that while I was playing with the MacBook Air, the CPU was literally at 100 degrees Celsius the entire time, bottlenecking the entire system and the eGPU. So the moral of the story is that for anything graphics related, you should absolutely avoid the Air. But what about just processor performance? Well is basically just as bad. We tested both the dual core and the quad core i5 model of the MacBook Air using the Cinebench R20 stress test. Both models of the Air that we tested were at 100 degrees Celsius the entire time. So from this, we know that the i7 model would have done the exact same thing since it uses even more power. We ended up with incredibly low scores compared to the raw performance scores we got in Geekbench 5. Specifically, the base MacBook Pro was 21% faster than the i5 MacBook Air in Geekbench 5's multi-core test, but in the Cinebench R20 stress test, it was actually 63% faster, and that massive difference is all due to the horrible cooling that's in the MacBook Air. We then also tested the SSDs on both the MacBook Air and the Base Pro, and even though they're the exact same 256 gig size, the one on the Pro was quite a bit faster for both read and write speeds. Now you might be thinking, that's fine, I don't mind, I don't really need great performance on the Air. Well, the issue is not just the lower performance, but the heat and fan noise issues as well. We tested out the quad-core i5 MacBook Air model, and we saw the temps hit 100 degrees Celsius in a lot of common tasks, like watching a 4K 60p video, downloading a game, or even opening up a bunch of tabs using Chrome. This should not be happening on a brand new laptop in 2020. And don't just take our word for it. Multiple commenters mentioned that the fan on their MacBook Air was really loud while doing basic tasks like video conferencing using Zoom, and that's the last thing that you want during a meeting. So basically, after all of that testing, we settled on this conclusion. If you care about performance or fan noise whatsoever, like at all, just buy the base MacBook Pro instead. So the final question is, who should be buying the 2020 MacBook Air? Well, there are a couple of user groups who the Air actually makes sense for. The first group are those who want the cheapest possible brand new MacBook, and at only $950, using the link below, it's definitely a killer deal. Now the second group is for those who need a premium laptop for doing a lot of typing, whether it's for school or for your job. Typing on this portable MacBook is great. And finally, the third group is for those who do a lot of basic web browsing, like surfing the web, using social media, watching Netflix or YouTube, or doing business-related work using Google Drive, QuickBooks, or building your website. For those three groups, the base 2020 MacBook Air is an excellent choice since you're saving $350 compared to the base MacBook Pro. And for users who like to have a lot of Chrome tabs open, the 16GB RAM upgrade will make a lot of sense, especially if you want to use it long term. So if you want to learn more about that base 2020 MacBook Pro, you can check out our review of that laptop right over there. And if you enjoyed this review, you can click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.